Monday, 2nd of January, 2017. About to do my last ever injection of Benefix, which is a recombinant clotting factor nine for Haemophilia B. The reason it's my last ever is because on Wednesday, I'm gonna be having a new, um, a new clotting factor, which is an extended half-life version. Um, and as this is my last ever one, my son, Aaron, who's behind the camera right now, taking this video, uh, thought it would be a great idea to video how to prepare and administer clotting factor. So that if there's any new parents or any children out there who uh, are learning how to infuse their clotting factor, um, you can watch, you can listen, and you can learn. Uh, and I'll be posting this to my Facebook page uh, and to various other social media like my blog uh, and, and, and other things. So you can refer to it and use it as necessary. Uh, when I was younger, I used to be very frightened of the needles. Uh, but as I've grown older, I've come to realize that the very brief moment of the pain of the needle going in is nothing in comparison to the pain of the bleed and the later arthritis that you get uh, if, you, if you don't have the injection. Uh, and so I've come, to, uh, I've come to understand that this equipment that you see before me, this medication that you see before me is actually my friend and it's something that will help me. And I look forward to going on to the new extended half-life factor as well. Um, but for now, I'll uh, prepare the injection and administer it so you can all watch and hopefully learn. So the first thing I'm going to do is take the Benefix. This is uh, Benefix, uh, recombinant clotting factor 9. You can see the white powder just there. Um, there's 2,000 international units in here. So I'm going to flip the top off and flip the top off that. I'm having 4,000 units, so that's two bottles of 2,000 units. Here's my sharps bin my tourniquet, my syringes with the distilled water in them, filter needles, butterfly needle, a swab, uh, an alcohol swab, and uh, a plaster. Next thing I'm gonna do is take the filter needles. So remove the paper from the fil sterilized filter needle, and there's a needle just there, which goes on there, clicks on, and comes off with an attachment for the syringe. And I'll do that for the second one as well. Now these are vacuum sealed, so when I put this filter needle in, that releases the vacuum. Now the sterilized water, the distilled water, just snap the top off there like that, pop that away, and screw and connect to the bottle. Push the plunger down so that the water mixes with the clotting factor and just give it a little mix. And I'm going to leave it there to dissolve a little bit more. Snap the next top off, put it in, connect, and do that. And give it a, a shake for a little bit of a mix. And here comes my daughter. It's okay, Leah. That's my daughter, Leah. She's a low level carrier of clotting fat, of, of factor nine. Um, so she has symptoms of hemophilia. Even though I have severe haemophilia, she has mild symptoms. Um, if you want to look up low level carrier status, you need to understand something called X inactivation or a process called lionization. It's the same thing, named after Marie Leon. Now undone the butterfly needle and I'm just untangling the tube. Put those to the side. As I'm self-administering this, I want the tube to be a certain way so it doesn't get tangled. Now, give these a bit of a mix, invert, and then draw it out. And as I'm drawing it out, it goes into the syringe. That was just my wife, she just came into the room. Didn't realize we were videoing it. Now I've got it all out, as you can see from there, but there's a big area of bubbles there. Just give it a flick, get rid of some of the bubbles, and just push it gently up till you get a little, a little bead just there. Again, invert. Try not to get too many bubbles um, made into the, the factor nine bottle because 
they're difficult to get out. Because they're difficult to get out, it just means more factor stays in the bottle than goes into the syringe. And you want as much factor in the syringe as possible. There we go. They're ready. Now, because I'm self-administering this, it's going to be quite difficult to put the needle in and then take the tip off. So what I do is pre-charge the needle. You do that by removing the top of the butterfly needle, pushing in or putting in, screwing on the, the first syringe, and then all I do is gently, very gently, just push the needle until the whole tube and the needle itself is filled with clotting factor and you can see that hopefully as you look at the needle and you see the clotting factor filling at the top part there so there's no need to press it really hard now that's fully charged what I need to do now is prepare my hand I've already swabbed this if you use these isopropanol swabs you should leave it about five minutes before you put the needle in because the alcohol doesn't kill any germs straight away. It dehydrates them. It takes about five minutes to kill them. Now I've already pre-swabbed. I'm just gonna do it one more time, just to show how to do it. Just get the swab, quickly brush over the vein. Now I always do my other hand as well. There's a good reason for that. And that is that sometimes I miss the vein or sometimes I pop through the vein. And if that happens, I can't use that vein again until <clears> the next injection. Can't use it again in the next few minutes. I've got to stop the bleeding there. And then, I've, but I've still got to do my injection. So I just switch hands with a new needle. Okay. So I've done both my hands. Now I prepare the tourniquet. Open it up. Make a loop. Now you want as much blood as possible in your vein. So I just let my hand dangle for a moment to get the blood down to the bottom, fit my hand through, pull tight. As I pull tight, I want, my, I want the tourniquet over the arm. Just a minute, Mum. He's just videoing. Uh, I just want the tourniquet over the arm so it occludes the blood flow. So it makes the vein stand up quite nicely. I'll just wait for my mum to get her handbag while we're videoing this. <laughs> and you want the veins to be able to stand up. Now, that's a bit too high up because I've got a lot of muscle mass there. I want to be able to get the veins. And as you can see, the veins are starting to stand up. Okay? They're starting to stand up. Can you see that? Yeah? Good. Right. Now, take the needle. This is a butterfly needle, so you, use the, you hold on to the wings of the butterfly. And you have to make sure that the needle itself is the right way round. You, it's angled, and you want the angle to be going down to a point, not up to a point, because otherwise it's going the wrong way. And the way to tell that, you can either look at it, or this flappy bit here always goes over the needle that way. That's always on top, never underneath. So if you're holding it that way, that's right. Flip those wings up and hold it like this. Once I unsheathe the needle, I can't resheathe it because I might get a needle stick injury. It's where you stab yourself with the, your own needle. That's not good. So once I've unsheathed it, the sheath doesn't go back on. So I take the sheath off. That's now ready to inject. Find the vein, needle ready, and you go in at a slight angle. Don't go in at too much of an angle, too obtuse an angle. You want to go in at an acute angle, but not too acute, nicely just to go into the vein. I find the run of the vein, and go along the line of the vein. Push down and forwards and down. You feel a pop of the vein, and you should see a little bit of blood come up the tube. If the blood's coming up the tube, you're in the vein. You don't want to push it too far. You should feel a little bit of resistance before it pops in. I'm just going to draw back on the syringe very slightly to make sure the blood free flows. If it free flows, 
then it means I'm still in the vein. If it doesn't free flow or it struggles to come out, I've either come back out of the vein or I've gone through the vein. Once I've reached this point, just press these buttons to release the tourniquet and I'm now ready to infuse the clotting factor. Don't go too fast, just nice and gentle. And I can tell you if I'm still in the vein, because if I draw back on the needle, look, there's Sammy Snake. Hello, Sammy. Bye, Sammy. Hello, Sammy. Bye, Sammy. And just nice and gently push the clotting factor into the vein. Now, a lot of people will tell you one mil per minute. That's the optimum speed. Uh, I'd probably go a bit faster than that. Um, you don't want to be pushing any bubbles in if necessary. So once I've done that, I just unscrew that and the next one you'll see blood coming back out. Sammy Snake. This is Sammy Snake again. So quickly back on, get rid of the bubbles, quick pull back and in we go. Now I can hold on to that and pop this one in the incineration box, in the sharps box. That's going to be burnt later at the hospital. Continue to infuse. And to make it more simple, if you remember the cap for the uh, butterfly needle, I didn't throw in the sharps box. It's still here, because I'm going to be using it in a minute. Because when I pull the needle out, I've only got two hands. I haven't got three hands. So to make it more manageable, what I do is once I get to the end of the clotting factor, I unscrew the syringe and pop the cap back on. That then stops the blood flowing out and get rid of the syringe. And it also makes it much more manageable for me to remove the needle. Then what I do is I make sure my incineration box is close by. My swab, I place over the needle itself and over the wound, but not over the butterfly part. I then, holding on to this, I then pull that out and it's gonna start bleeding straight away and push down. And drop that into the incineration box and press firmly. And then with this hand, I can just make sure that the needle's not sticking out and that everything's in there. Once that's done, I can put that to the side. Direct firm pressure to the injury site, to the site of the injection. Just hold that for a few minutes. Sometimes it'll heal quicker, sometimes it'll heal slower. It doesn't really matter. Just keep pushing and keep pressing until the bleeding stops. There'll be a bit of blood on the swab because I wasn't applying direct pressure when I pulled the needle out, because I can't. One hand's got the needle in it, the other hand's pulling out the needle. So there's gonna be a bit of blood on the swab. Just keep pushing, keep holding. Just keep pushing, keep holding. <laughs> now what I'm gonna do is just check. So I'm still pushing down. I'm just gonna wipe that away and have a look. You can see there, no blood's coming out, so that's okay. There's the blood on there. Put that in the incineration box. Get my plaster, just in case it starts bleeding again, over the site, and we're done. Thank you for watching my last ever injection of Benefix Clotting Factor 9. I hope that if you ever have to have an injection too, or if you're ever preparing an injection for a loved one, that you can take heart to know that doing the injection means that your loved one is going to be in a lot less pain than they will be ever with the bleed. Take care. May 2017 and the future bring you lots of love and happiness. Goodbye.